Over the last two weeks, I was practically disabled and you have not seen me upload a single video. This is very out of the blue. I like I literally upload consistently all the time. And over the last two weeks, nothing. And this was for, unfortunately, good reason. I took a trip to Quebec. For, for those who don't know, Quebec is a province in Canada and it's north. And usually people go to Quebec for two reasons. To go to this one popping town called Montreal, where there's like, you know, big parties, whatever. And the other reason is to go to the evil, tall, scary, snowy mountains, northern Quebec. I took a trip to Quebec where the cold stings your lungs like 20 billion sharp knives and everyone speaks French there. But I was not going to that town. I was not going to Montreal. So that leaves me with one other thing to do, which is... To go to those even mountains and to ski off of them. What an unfortunate series of events that would unfold after. So I went with a couple of friends to the evil mountains of Quebec and I started skiing. You know, we went skiing there and they were quite a bit more experienced than me. I've never skied in my life where I'm fucking Arabian, right? I have sand, not snow. Back home, we don't know what snow is. Snow is like this unknown, mysterious substance. We don't know what snow is. Bro, the rain is fucking artificial, for fuck's sake, in, <laughs> in, uh, in the UAE, in Dubai. The rain is artificial. You want to talk to me about snow? I don't know what snow is. So I go there and I'm, you know, I'm getting the hang of it. I'm learning how to ski. I'm learning like the basics. There's like the bunny hill. Like there's this, the bunny hill is where little kids learn. Little kids, like the five-year-olds, the four-year-olds, and also the adults who've never done skiing their lives that's where they learn so i'm learning on the bunny hill i'm learning okay how to stay upright how to not fall every three seconds i'm balancing it's kind of like ice skating but five times harder and i'm learning how to stay upright i'm learning how to you know increase speed i'm learning just basically literally learning how to stand and how to go that's it that's all i'm learning around 30 minutes later around an hour later these very experienced friends they were flying off the mountains you know going ski, whatever they're they're doing their things and then they're like, okay, Ali, let's go to the next part, like the let's, let's upgrade. And to those who know what skiing, like who actually ski, there are three, there's a bit more, but let's just talk about three stages. Green circle, blue square, and, <laughs> and black diamond. These are like three difficulties in skiing. Green circle is a bit easy, you know, all you need to do is like, it's not fast, it's not steep slopes, you just, just go and turn some turns. Sometimes you turn. Blue square is like a bit harder, the steeper slopes, and you know, you have to turn a lot, and it's just a lot harder than green circle. And then we have black diamond. Black diamond is like blue square, but on steroids. Black diamond is like the evil big brother of the blue square. There's very steep slopes, there's sharp turns, there's trees, there's cliffs. There's a lot of horrible things that you don't want to be around if you're an experienced or if you're a new skier. Unfortunately, I was around Black Diamonds that night. So I'm doing the blue squares and bro, I'm barely, like, I don't know how to turn. I literally, like, my friends just took me. You'll be fine, you'll be fine. Oh, come bro, you have no balls, let's do it. And you know me, I have a stubborn thick head. So when someone tells me you have no balls, I'm gonna fucking do it, even if I'm risking my life. <laughs> So I'm going to the green circles and bro, I'm flopping the green circles because you have to turn a little bit in one of the green circles I went to. Uh, these are like green circle runs, like the different mountains have different stages, right? So this mountain was a green circle and I was barely, like I was flopping it. I was falling. I couldn't, I couldn't turn. All I, bro, all I knew what to, was to just go. I didn't know how to turn. I didn't know how to stop. All I knew was just go. It was like, imagine being in a car and all you know how to do is press the gas pedal. You don't know how to steer, you don't know how to use the brake, you don't know how to change gears, you don't know anything. You're in a car and all you know how to do is press the accelerator, press the gas. That was me. That was me on the green circle. Bro, I was bombing the shit. I... <laughs> you don't understand, man. I was flying at green... Like, I didn't know how to control my speed. And I was flopping it. And then... My friends told me, it's fine, bro. You're flopping the green circles. Let's take you... To a blue square. A blue square. Little did I know this blue square was far from a blue square. The skiing marshal, the man who controls all the mountains, he was going to change. He knew like this blue square was, was labeled wrong. It wasn't actually a blue square. It was indeed a black diamond. And here I am, 
fucking falling and flopping the green circles bro you have to like spend months on green circles before you can master it and then maybe a couple of years on the blue squares and then decades on the black diamonds all i spent was one day on the green circles and i was flopping them i could not steer yet i didn't know how to steer and so we took the chairlift to the next mountain which was a blue square i'll get I, i'll explain why i'm doing this in a moment we took we went all the way up top and i'm looking down and it's like bro, this is fucking scary this is actually petrifying and then my friend looks at me and i look at my friend this dickhead friend and all he says is no balls one nanosecond after he says no balls I'm flying down the blue square. The beginning of the blue square was a bit, it was okay. Until this happened. Let me show you a visualization. <laughs> Let me show you a visualization of what the fuck I was going to. So this is me and this is my friend. And this is the beginning of the blue square. You know, it's a bit, uh, a bit of a slope. You know, it's kind of pretty, like a far, very fucking steep slope compared to the green circles I was going like. Green circles is pretty much flat, right? Pretty fucking steep. And I thought I was fine. Like, I didn't know how to stop. I, but all I know is, like, all I know is just go fucking down. Bomb the cliff. All I know is just go. I don't know how to stop or steer or do any tricks. So I'm thinking, okay, this is fine. I'll just keep going like this till the end, till we reach uh, ground level. But what you don't see when you go skiing is a little bit ahead of you. Sometimes things like this happen. And unfortunately, I did not see that either. <laughs> so on this ride, I'm fucking flying. Bro, I'm flying. People here are like slowing down. They're doing like the, the pizza thing, like where to, you break snowplow. You control your speed. They're doing like parallel skis. Because when you go left and right, instead of just bombing it down, you kind of, like you can imagine, your speed is a little bit less. You don't want to be flying off, you know, a little bump or a cliff. So I'm flying. I, like, I don't know how to control my speed. All I know is just make it to the bottom alive in one piece. I'm flying, I'm flying, I'm flying. And I did not see this part. So this is the height of a 10-story building. I want you to go Google what a 10-story building fucking looks like. And what happened to me was something that should happen to no man. I flung off this fucking cliff at a velocity unbeknownst to man you bro you don't even like i'm going almost full speed here imagine what happens here i fling off the cliff but this wasn't the worst part somehow i don't know well, bro i actually don't know how somehow i managed to hit here and i'm fine but this wasn't the worst part the worst part is because i'm flying down the cliff at terminal velocity which means the maximum speed you can go at <laughs> I'm flying, I'm flying, I'm flying, and then I'm climbing this, li there's a little bump that's going up, the G-forces at this point, to like Formula One racers, uh, you know what G-forces are, right, they're, they're basically these forces that press on your body, imagine you're in a car, and you're braking really hard, you're gonna feel like this, this force, like you're gonna be going a little bit ahead, or if you're accelerating really hard, you're just gonna be flung back in the seat, those are G-forces, so I'm flying up this thing, and the G-forces are pushing me back, but I can't, like, I'm not stopping because of the amount of speed I have. And then I met with a tree. But this tree is not like any other weak tree. This tree has roots that reaches the underworld. This, this bro, this, this tree has roots that reaches fucking hell. Which means it's not gonna break. And here I am going at terminal velocity. The speed like i already got bro i already fell off the fucking cliff and i'm already damaged enough with the speed i have i'm like a rocket people are looking at me like what the hell this guy's gonna die and i'm flying down the cliff and then i just speed and i hit this tree i'm tumbling down at this point i climb the thing and i see the tree and i'm like oh fuck let me fall before i hit the tree so it's less damaging to no avail my body hits the tree while i'm tumbling and my back, my lower back, goes like this. My lower back caves in. Let me give you a demonstration. 
this happened to me and at a speed of like 100 kilometers per hour bro i was going so fucking fast at a speed of 100 kilometers per hour my lower back just went like this it went like this and bro let me tell you the amount of pain i felt in that moment was like actually out of this world i think i got knocked out immediately from the impact for like two seconds and i woke up paralyzed my legs are paralyzed i can't move like it was the worst pain of my life and you know when you like you, your back gets hit so hard that you like you're out of breath you can't even breathe properly you just like shock it's a shock you can't even breathe properly that happened to me lower back snapped my legs are paralyzed i can't move and i can't breathe and it was i'm telling you bro like top three worst pains of my entire life and to those people who know me i have a very high pain tolerance my body is very durable I have an extremely high pain tolerance. I never really complain about pain. This was the worst thing that ever happened to me. The skiing patrollers who were like up on top, you know, patrolling the, the like cliffs and everything, making sure everyone was okay. One of them saw my fall. Any pain in your neck? And he rung up every single fucking medic in the area to speed down. Not speed down at my speed. My speed is out of this world, bro. Over 100 kilometers per hour on fucking skiing. That's like actually messed up. Nobody goes that speed. You can't. <laughs> well, you can't, but you'll die. <laughs> they're speeding down. Uh, it's like, you know, they're doing their techniques to come to me without damaging themselves in the process. Three medics immediately come to me and they're like checking up on me. And then this guy with like a snowmobile comes and like a he has like a stretcher or something. He puts me like into the stretcher. He's like telling me to crawl. And you know in Call of Duty we're like in like campaign right or just games in general. General when you get like like stunned or you get flash banged or you get shot and it's like press left bumper to crawl right bumper and like it's each arm. Basically felt like that, bro. It was. I couldn't move, my legs were paralyzed and like I had to crawl onto the stretcher, use every ounce of my like my 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 bicep strength and my lat strength to just crawl and crawl and crawl onto the stretcher and they put me into like that stretcher and they like closed up on me and they set like the he put me like with the snowmobile down the mountain. I got put into this clinic, right? There was a, it was a ski resort and the ski resort put me into this clinic and they're like Bro, what the fuck are you doing? Why are you still here? You need to get into an ambulance and go get a hospital. Go to the hospital. Your back is messed up. I'll show you like a picture of how like red my back was just from the impact, let alone like the the possible bone damage underneath. It's just red, this red line. Go to an ambulance. You need to get X-rays. Blah blah blah. And I wish I kind of did. I, I kind of wish I did that, but you know, I I just thought. Yeah, man, I'll good. I'll just go home. Fuck that. I don't want to be injected with fucking estrogen. <laughs> I'm just joking. But no, I, I really wish I took the fucking ambulance. But I, I refused treatment because I just wanted to get home. And I was in the north northern parts of Quebec. High mountains. I don't know what hospital I'll get to. I don't know how I'll get home. It's just a fucking mess. And I, I just don't want treatment. And it was so bad. Like, they, they kept on telling me, no, you need it. You need it. You need it. They brought out a fucking waiver. Bro, they brought out a paper that said... I, the client, refused treatment on purpose, something along those lines, because I, like, so I don't sue them, basically, because they knew, okay, there's death, like, he took damage, and he can sue us, basically, if we don't make him sign this paper, so I signed the fucking paper, uh, and, you know, I struggled to breathe for a long time, it was horrible, man, like, this, this shit was genuinely fucking horrible worst pains of my life imagine like imagine the speed you're going at and it's just broken it's just fucking broken but you know what i'm eternally grateful for man? i'm so grateful and i'm so glad i strengthened my lower back and my neck do you know why do you know why all the time i fucking tell you strengthen your neck it can save your life because of this exact situation this exact situation can get you killed you know in car accidents when you like when you hit a wall or when you hit another car the number one of the leading causes of death is just whiplash whiplash from your neck just banging onto like the the back of something not the fact that you know shards enter your body or like glass or no not that it's literally whiplash whiplash as in you know what whiplash is whiplash is when you're going fast in an object and then you hit something that's stationary and then you just like your head imagine you're driving right and then you hit a wall of course you're just, your head is just kind of filling backwards that's one of the leading causes of death imagine the whiplash i felt 
at 100 fucking kilometers per hour hitting a stationary tree. I literally saved my life by training my neck. If not at least saving myself from being a paralyzed cripple for the rest of my life. Imagine how sad that would be. Imagine how sad that would be just like this 19 year old who's perfectly healthy. And then he just becomes paralyzed or a cripple for the rest of his life with like speech impediments and like someone has to feed him for the rest of his 60 years on this earth imagine how sad that would be i avoided that faith or that fate because i trained my neck because i've been deadlifting over 400 pounds every single time i go to the gym deadlifting and deadlifting and training my neck every single time i go to the gym when i tell you train your fucking neck because it will save your life i mean it i mean it you will you will see me refer to this to this like situation every single time I tell you to train your neck. Before I used to say train your neck, it could save your life. I will tell you now, train your neck. It has saved my life. It has saved me from my, like from death, if not from being a cripple for the rest of my life. Imagine how sad that would be, bro. Just being a cripple, bro. You think I knew something like this could happen, bro? I went to like I went skiing for fun. You know why not? Speed. I'll control. I'll learn whatever. I went as this like innocent fun activity. You think I knew it would turn into this horror, to this fucking horror movie where I literally almost lose everything? Crippled, paralyzed, dead. You think I knew this could happen? It could happen to you and I, bro, you could be walking down the street and like some random thing hits you, some like a car hits you. But it's not in, like like the whiplash, you should die from the whiplash, but you don't because your neck is strong. You don't know when you need the strength of your sternocleidomastoid muscles, which are these, to save your fucking life. Because these are the things that will stabilize your neck when your head just bounces back like this. That's what will save your life. And same thing with deadlifts, man. With deadlifts, like, the deadlifts saved my, my spine from fucking snapping, snapping, snapping just because of the muscles there and the strength there and the bone density that, that like, increased there. Imagine like your spine just snaps in half and it's just separated. That's permanently damaged for the rest of your life. No matter what surgeries you do, bro, no matter how many hundreds of thousands of dollars you put into surgeries, you will never be the same. You will never be the same. And that's why I'm so grateful that I've trained my body. I'm so fucking grateful that I trained my body, that I strengthened my body, that I did deadlifts, that I did the, the neck training. That I increased my lower back strength. Like imagine the panic I felt as like when I hit the thing and I couldn't feel my legs. And I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm paralyzed for life. I'm crippled. I'm gone. But imagine the amount of fucking like gladness I felt when it turns out I was okay. So please, when I tell you, man, please fucking listen to me. When I say train your neck, train your lower body, train your deadlifts. Please train, they can save your life and they literally saved mine. If it was someone else who hit this thing, who's never trained his neck, who's never deadlifted, who's never trained his, his lower back, good chance he wouldn't be here with us today. I hope you can understand the magnitude of, of this situation. There's a good chance he wouldn't be here with us today. If not paraplegic, crippled for the rest of his life. Please, bro, please. Like, I don't gain anything from telling you to lift. I don't gain anything from... If anything, it just gives me more competition. I don't gain anything from telling you, train your back, train your neck. All I'm doing is literally saving you and putting you in a better place. You don't know when this shit can fucking happen. You never know. You think I knew? Of course I didn't know. I don't gain anything from telling you to lift. Please take this seriously, man. Please take your body seriously. You never know when it can save your life. And this was the day it saved mine. I survived falling off this cliff because I trained my body. Please take your body seriously, bro. Mine came in clutch and I'm eternally grateful for it. This... This story will be in my mind for a very long time. Please, bro. I, like, I keep on saying the same thing. You need to train your neck, your lower back, and just your entire posterior chain. If I had a weak posterior chain, 
that's it. I'm gone. And I'm eternally grateful that I've trained myself. If you want to make money the same way I did, fuck load of money, build your own empire the same way I did, within six months, click the first link in the description, brother. You will not regret it. We've already got many, many students blowing up and making money inside Project 10K. Other than that, take care, brother. I'll see you soon.